Hey guys, Jason Sayers back here once again with another video. Today we're doing something a little bit differently. Today we're talking about the eight things you should do before you enter the studio to record live drums. Let's get into it. Everything I mention in this video has all come from personal experience. And although you may not agree with everything I mention here, they are all valid points and everything that I've learned from my own past experiences. So enjoy the video. Pre-production can be the be all and end all of any good project. Make sure before you enter the studio, you've taken the time to learn MIDI drum programming. This can be an utter lifesaver. Literally, I used to key in all of my drum parts just using my mouse and Cubase. That was it. And then I'd send this off to my guitarist and then guess what? I would have a really stable guitar track to play to. If you do use backing tracks, make sure they're on there as well. You're going to need them for cue points during the song to make sure you do not get lost. Having all of this gives you a really stable foundation to play to, meaning you get a really human performance, so you won't be relying on time alignment. That said, if you do use tempo maps, make sure you bounce them down as a MIDI file as taking these into studios using different doors such as Pro Tools and Logic if you use Cubase can maneuver by at least a couple of milliseconds. So make sure you do it, otherwise you might find yourself being slightly out of time when you get it back. This next one should really go without saying. Before you enter the studio and spend your hard earned money, make sure you know how you're playing the songs. I've seen so many drummers enter the studio without doing any preparation work at all. You really need to practice to a metronome and all of the backing tracks for months before you even enter the studio to record your drums. That way you can get three good takes and then comp them down to one solid take or if you're really lucky sometimes you can even get it in the first take and then that will save you a lot of time in the long run and a lot of heartache. Never turn up to a drum recording with beaten up drums and dead drum heads. You are not going to have a good time and these cannot simply be fixed in the mix, especially if you're completely against having triggers ruin your performance. Basically, make sure you change the top and the bottom heads every time before you record. Make sure the heads have been seated correctly and they are tuned properly. If you don't know how to tune a drum properly, check on YouTube. There's millions of videos out there that can show you how to do it. Or if you do get stuck, there's many products on the market such as the drum dial and the tune bot to help you out of a jam. Always check your cymbals for damage before you enter. That's not to say you always need the most expensive cymbals on the planet before you can go into a recording studio and get a professional sound. I've seen many recordings happen with Zildjian ZBTs, Sabian B8s, the list goes on. These are quite budget friendly cymbals and sound quite good on a lot of recordings. However, as soon as cymbals get damaged, they do sound really dull and you're not gonna be able to fix that in a mix, trust me. Making sure you have sufficient dampening products in your bag at any given point will always be a massive help. This can be as simple as having some moon gels from some gaffer tape with some rolled up toilet paper stuck in the middle. Anything to help get rid of that annoying overtone either from the snare or the high tom. Trust me, your ears will thank you for it after the mix process. Whenever you do a drum recording, make sure you've got tools and spares to hand. I've had everything go on me from drum heads during the recording process, sticks, and even my cymbal stands have given up on me. All of these things can be vital, such as gaffer tape, a drum key, allen keys, and a couple of screwdrivers. Make sure you've got them in your stick bag at all times. Otherwise, you might not have a very fun recording session. So now you're ready to hit the recording studio and record your live drums. You've practiced till you're blue in the face, you've got all your backing tracks ready, you've got your tempo maps on a USB stick, you're ready to go. Make sure you research the engineer before you go to the studio or book any form of time with them. Check their website, make sure they can get the drum sound you are after. 
because if they only specialize in jazz, you're not gonna walk away with a great metal drum recording, I promise you. Now this one I've heard of happening from countless engineers. Make sure you listen to the engineer whose studio it is that you're recording at. They know the room better than you, and just because it is your piece of music does not mean you have the right to tell them what to do. They know exactly what they're doing to get the drum sound that you are after. Let them do it, listen to them, follow their instructions, and if they're asking you to dampen something, do it. If it doesn't work, they will always hear it and tell you to do another take. So there we go. That's my eight things to do before entering a studio and recording live drums. I hope you found it all helpful. If you did, don't forget to give the video a quick like. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss another video. Also, if you fancy checking out any of my other videos of my drum reactions, they'll be appearing on screen now. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.